Welcome to Social Media Meltdown here on Just Cool Enough and on YouTube and everywhere. I'm Joe. And I'm Caitlin. And we're, this week, what are we going to be talking about, Caitlin? Oh, I mean, I'm really excited. I'm just really excited about the show in general. And I'm not sure why I'm so excited about this this topic, because it's kind of scary. Um, we're going to be talking about password protection today. Um, but in the last week, there's been a lot of password hacking going on. Um, and it's really something to, to be alarmed about. Um, and so we have some best practices for you guys and um, kind of giving you an update of which sites in the last week have been hacked and so you can go on there and change your passwords. And, uh, huh. yeah, so it's going to be password-oriented. We can, we can do a whole show on sites that are getting hacked, especially big ones. So this is such a relevant topic. I'm really excited to talk about it. What's the big news? What sparked this interest in your in your brain? Was it the last FM? Was it the LinkedIn? <laughs> I mean, what? Where where do we even start? Well, I mean, from from previous shows that we've done, I'm obviously a really big advocate for LinkedIn. Like, I just think it's a really great network, and they have a lot going on. It has a lot of um, professional uses, and doesn't have all the drama of Facebook, whatever. However, they had a lot of drama last week. Um, they were hacked. And uh, it left, I believe it was like 6.5 million members um, had their passwords hacked or compromised. Um, so they sent out mass email, and then in the process, I had to tell everyone at work um, because I'm a social media person. And uh, coincidentally, someone else at work had to tell me that this had happened. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't read the news that morning. I had a busy morning. And, um, so anyway, it was like 6.5 million people um, had their passwords compromised. Um, the day before, I believe it was eHarmony. Um, oh, so eHarmony, that was the other one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one didn't really affect me, but it does affect a lot of people. There's a lot of people on eHarmony, surprisingly. Um, and then last was Last FM, um, and that one was also hacked. So, I mean, those were the big sites that were hacked, but sites get hacked all the time. Um, they do. And, you know, like, bigger bigger sites that kind of require multiple kinds of logins are a little bit safer. Like, uh, I, I think you can... I had this on my phone where uh, I kept getting a message saying that somebody was trying to log in from China on my Google account. So what I did is I did a two-step password protection, two-step authentication through Google, saying that, you know, every time I'm adding something in, in Google properties, make sure there's authentication. And so, like, even if I went to log into YouTube on, um, on like, somebody's PS3 or something like that, mm -hmm. um, it would send a, a message to my phone and be like, okay, now here's your unique code. And it was, like, really secure, really awesome. But like was, when you try to log into your banking information. Well, not when I was log logging my banking information, just, like, Google accounts. So I think more people should use, like, dual-layer passwords. It was kind of a pain in the ass, though. Um, other ways to kind of get around is uh, having an authenticator. I don't know, like, uh, Blizzard. I know World of Warcraft players know that they have, like, a little dongle that's, like, time-sensitive. And when you go log in, you press a button, and it has a string of numbers, and you enter it in. That's super secure, but it's also super pain in the ass. So, what? I how do we? Uh, are, are, do you got any tips uh, for password create creation? Um, I mean, there's and there's a lot out there, and, and I tried to look up some to see like what were some of the the highly suggested ones, and um, so I came made, made a list of all the ones that I thought were the greatest, uh, and I also made a list of the ones I thought were not great that people were recommending. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, this one comes from oh, Microsoft actually had a lot of really great ones. So they suggest that the length of your password be eight or more characters. Good. Um, that it includes letters, punctuation, symbols, and numbers, and numbers. So all of them. Um, and that it also has lowercase and uppercase letters. Um, and that if you're using like, the word and in your password, that you opt for the and symbol instead of... Um, a and D, or if you have the letter or the word two, any case of the word two, um, to use the number rather than the word, or vice versa. So if you're doing your birthday, zero one two zero whatever January twentieth, then to use T W O or T O instead of two. Um, and then what I find is the most important, and this is kind of something I was explaining to my mother earlier today, um, is to use variety, not to use the same password for every account. 
um, because what people, what these guys are doing is, you typically use your same email address for every login. Like that's just hands down a standard. Everyone has one email address, basically. Yeah. Well, then if you use the same password, now they can get into your Google account, they can get into your Facebook, they can get into your Twitter, they can get into um, everything. <laughs> um, so that's one thing you're you're going to want to stay away from, and make sure you're using all different. Um, all different passwords. Um, then they give you this really, and I, the link will be posted in the show notes, but um, they give you this exercise so to build your password. So they recommend you start with a sentence and then remove all the spaces from that sentence and then turn those words into shorthand or misspelled words yep. and then add numbers to the front or the ends. No. But to me, that sounds really complicated, and I will probably forget. Well, you know, as long as you're adding a extra variable, make sure you're using the shift key, and yeah. make sure you're using characters that are outside of the English language or any your native language, really. Um, dictionary words are pretty much the worst password you could ever do, besides one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or password. I mean, yes. like you can't. You gotta stick. D- just do not use dictionary words. Always make sure you got your extra... I mean, we, we sound like one of those things, like, make sure you have four characters. One has to be... Sh-. It, it's important, though, because, yeah. um, you know, the more people get on the Internet, the more the more times people are going to try to be... Um, I mean, the more people are out th- to get your information. It's just... Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. So uh, security is kind of a really big deal, and I don't think that uh, I don't think that a lot of big companies take it very seriously. Uh, and I would have thought last year after Sony got its uh, something it stuck in something else, uh, after Sony got really really slammed um, after, because they got hacked on the PlayStation Network, and there was tons mm-hmm. of credit card information all over. It was a giant mess, and I thought that was going to be a big wake up. Call to especially it really company, wasn't. yeah, it really wasn't, and especially companies like LinkedIn, what that kind of links together everything about you, and and you can really, I mean, if somebody had your eHarmony, LinkedIn, and your last FM account passwords, like they could pretty much tell everything about everything. I mean, that that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. So it I don't is. Know, complex passwords are a good thing, even though they're really boring to to try to make interesting. Yes, and then, um, well, when, then one of the, when I was looking up all these sites and, and I was looking for, you know, password, password best practices and what you should do and what you shouldn't do, and then I kept finding all these recommendations of mobile apps where you can store your passwords, uh-huh. and I just couldn't think of a worse idea. What is the one thing you lose all the time? You don't lose your laptop all the time. You lose your phone all the time. <laughs> I you know like please the, don't store your passwords in your phone. Well, you know, and they have like the 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 keys, the password key ring things, and things mm-hmm. like that. And I I don't know if I trust those because then you're just putting all your stuff into one fail point, and unless that's encrypted, blah 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 blah. I I just think that it, you have to best practices it you you make each password different for every site you're on. Which and is write a pain- them on a piece of paper. <laughs> I have a password notebook that I have like just stored casually on my bookshelf. Well, now we know where to look. Now you're going to have to hide it again. I know. Sorry. <laughs> because I don't think, I mean, my house has never been broken into. Yeah. Not now that you told people but that your passwords. But I feel like is storing them on my computer is a much worse idea than storing them on paper somewhere in my bedroom. See. Even if I posted them on the wall for all to see, it's still safer than putting them on my phone, which I've been known to leave a number of places. Well, and so. the other thing, like, uh, it, you could make it easy on yourself making unique passwords for sites. Um, mm-hmm. One one thing that uh, you can do is, like, if if you're if the site you're on Yahoo or something like that if if you type in your normal password and then Yahoo in all caps or something like that and add some zeros onto it or or you know just something like to make it unique to that that site um, another kind of weak point that people don't really think of very often is security questions um, mm-hmm. maybe somebody can't guess your password but security questions are something that somebody can guess like okay mother's maiden name easily found on Facebook. Uh, where did you live first? Found out on eHarmony when I hacked your account. You know, like. <laughs> or if you filled out your timeline map and right? Facebook. F- 
favorite song? Well, Last FM just got hacked. Yep. <laughs> well, you don't even need to hack to find that, though. But, I mean, like, that kind of stuff is easily accessible information. If somebody, and the biggest form of hacking is social engineering. Not actually hacking, you know, with a keyboard, going like, wham, 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 you know, like, nobody's slamming on a keyboard. Do it. I mean, people do that, but the biggest way people get hacked is by putting their personal information out there and you know a mother's made a name is a really awful security it's it's not a good key so anyway you got to keep things unique to the sites you're on otherwise uh you're putting yourself you're you're more vulnerable Uh, but those security questions are really important so rather than answering them correctly you should answer them wrong it's actually more secure to answer these security questions you know city i was born in Definitely not gonna put wine dot. I'll put like I don't know. Make up a city. Jotoria. Hoth. Where do you wish you would have lived? I know. The Hogwarts. Whatever you want. Now you can't use that. That's obvious. That that would be something you would use now that you. But no. But that, it, it, it's more secure to actually lie about that information. So uh, that's something so you to think be about too. consistent about your lies. <laughs> Otherwise, it just becomes a big mess. <laughs> Yes, exactly. But yeah, you do have to be consistent with it. Otherwise, it's it can be other, utterly useless. But I mean, for safety, for best practices, I'm just letting other people know. Yeah, and 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 I want to stress like how common this is because it really is fairly common. Like all the time, this is happening. Um, Facebook recently um, let out some some stats that. Um, hackers go after Facebook accounts 600,000 times a day. Yep. 600,000 times a day. It's nuts. Chances are yours will be one of those eventually. It will happen to you. Eventually. So, uh, uh, just statistically Sooner speaking, rather than later, eventually maybe. it will happen. <laughs> and then, um, I mean, and even you have to pay attention to even those um, those phishing emails that, that people are getting. Um, and this was what brought up the whole... Um, conversation with my mom earlier because she forwarded me an email and she goes, "Hey, I just got this mess or this email from LinkedIn reminding me that I have unread messages, but it was sent from like someone's personal account, <laughs> and I just don't really know what to do with it." And I go, "What's well, it? Click on it?" She's like, "No." And I go, "Okay." So she sends me, and all the links were to like some weird website, all the hyperlinks, and so I went to one of them, and it was a fake login screen for LinkedIn. So I had explained to her how all that works, and um, so it, it's really common these days for this to happen, and and it was common before, but there's just so many people, and I feel like um, the younger generations understand that, yeah, but the absolutely. largest growing network on social media right now is our parents' generation, who doesn't exactly understand that there are not nice, most people on the internet are just not nice people. It is up to... <laughs> It is up to the younger generation to keep them safe. It is, and I and I try so hard, um, it, and to educate them on this. And um, I'm actually having a um, social media lunch and learn um, at my work that I'm teaching uh, next learn. month. I think one week or one day a week all next month um, to kind of show them what can happen and what you don't want to happen, and how you can keep all of this from going down. Um, Because basically my phone is ringing off the hook um, when the LinkedIn thing happened. Because we encourage all of our employees to be on LinkedIn, to share our job openings on LinkedIn, to join um, to join the the discussion groups that have to do with their field, and share share our knowledge without sharing too much to make us look like a really awesome place to work. Um, So there's actually a website that um, a company, a third party company started where you can check to see if your LinkedIn account was compromised. Um, even if it wasn't compromised, they're still recommending that everyone change their password anyway. Same thing for everyone. I mean, they don't exactly know everything that, that was that was taken that day. So, mine wasn't compromised, but I still changed it. And I forgot it, and I had to reset it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, do you, do you um, practice what you th- preach, Caitlin? Do you... Because... Uh, are you making unique passwords for every site? Do you do you make sure that all your passwords are are not digitized or relating to anything? Like you, it, your smile makes me think that that you don't. Um, my oh, work one. Um, we have to change our work passwords. I believe every like ninety days, and they can't be anything you've had in the last like three years. 
So I'm kind of starting to like run out of passwords. I had to update mine the other day and I kind of just like looked around my desk and then just made up something from whatever I was inspired by at the second. Um, but I probably have like four or five passwords that I use for everything. So I know if it's not this one, then it has to be one of the other four. Um, and I, and I know that's not a great way to go about it and I should change. <laughs> See, uh, you know, I, I kind of let the world pick my passwords for me, and uh, so, like, what happens is, like, you know how you always get that weird, like, first password at work? Like, mm -hmm. I, I just try to make, like, a variation of, of that, and, I mean, it's just... I was going to ask you what your company's password is. Oh, it's, um, <laughs> it's password, duh. Password123. Is two, it really? Three. Password123, duh. Oh, mine's just one, two, three, four, five. What? What are you talking about? No, that's not true our, at all. Yes, our new employees. When you get your login, that's your password. Oh, really? Yeah, that's know. what I was asking. Like, what is your company set up as their password? My my old company was just the initials of the company one, two, three. I think that's like common. You know, like that's kind of <laughs> how they do. That's probably a really easy way to hack around stuff. The, oh, the right. Initials of the company <laughs> one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five. But um, what I just. I try to practice what I preach, and usually I do, but um, one thing I don't do and I should do is change my passwords every once in a while. I, I never do. Like, I have this one that's just my go-to. For a while, for a long time, for an embarrassing long time, the password to my Yahoo account was three characters. And because I got, they, a, made, they didn't make you change it. No, they didn't make me change it. I was and I was kind of just waiting it out, like you know, like they're gonna eventually have to make me change this. And I said that like back in '05. Like I made my account in, like '97 or something like that, like way back. Yeah, when three-word passwords were acceptable. Yeah, and you can probably guess what a three-word password is for for me. It was my <laughs> name, but <laughs> you know, like I was like easy to remember, Joe. What an easy pat! Like I know my name exactly, right? I'll never forget that. But I can't believe how long Yahoo let me go on. Like it was just till this year I changed it. I was like, you know what? I can't live in this world anymore with a three-character password. I just don't know how you're living in this world with a Yahoo email account. Well, that was my trash email that I started up. That that gets you know 700 emails a day from all the stupid stuff I've signed up for over the year. Man, yeah. I wish I could clean that out. <laughs> I've lost control of it. I don't even clear it out anymore. It's just a big pit of email despair. I kind of unsubscribe from stuff. So I, between like 2 a.m. and about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, um, I get about like 25 to 35 oh, um, so much junk trash. emails. And I, and I try in the morning to like unsubscribe to five of them before I get out of bed. <laughs> and um, I just can't keep up. And I feel like I'm unsubscribing, but it's still happening. So I gave up, and I just keep hitting delete every morning and stuff. You know what site really, really ground my gears? I decided to make my address in the U.S. Postal Service, like, forward it to a different <laughs> address, and they duped me. I didn't really read that hard, and I just clicked accept and this and that, and all of a sudden, I was getting so many emails from all from the the you know companies that I didn't really know I was signing up for the US Postal Service basically strong armed me into completely ruining my my Gmail account and it took me like 3 weeks to clear that stuff out it was awful so they do and like I was so excited because like you you submit all that stuff and then at least when I did it um, I got a bunch of gift cards and like coupons <laughs> for um, yeah you're like Lowe's all right. and yeah. Lowe's and I was like yes and then they just kept sending me more crap for things I didn't need I've, and just junk I was totally taken advantage of they are but you get really excited at first you're like yes no, Home they, they Depot coupons they totally duped me though yeah um well, do you have any other good suggestions for password protection and, I, and keeping all our, our listeners out there, our viewers out there safe? I uh, I don't. I do have I, I do have a a plug though. I have one too. Really? Yes. Now I did kind of trash on the places where you have one point of failure. Um, you know, kind of like oh, I'm gonna put all my passwords in this one spot, but. I don't use it because I'm sc I, I, I'm scared of commitment, obviously. Um, 
But you can actually get free versions of uh, LastPass, and that's kind of like the biggest one that I know and I would recommend if somebody was <laughs> telling me about it, because it kind of... I. It, it, it's completely cross-platform. You can put it on your PC, you can put it on your Mac, you can put it on your Android phone, put it on your iDevice, put it on your BlackBerry. And um, mm-hmm. it, it could just... It, it, from what I understand, it could speed things up a whole lot. Do you have any experience with LastPass? No, I, I haven't. And, and that was one of the things I... When I was doing research for the show, I found a lot of information about, and it seemed to be very highly recommended by a lot of people it, the reason it's it's so highly recommended is because it's it, it is pretty simple and it will automatically fill out the forms and remember your passwords on your devices and everything and it makes things easy but i i'm just a little bit too um i don't know nerdy for it i i just i i don't want i don't want to have one point of failure but if you do want to have one point of failure last pa- pass is probably the best way to go because i was doing some research be- before the show too and then all my other it buds also recommended last passes kind of like the saving grace of one password to have what about you what's your plug this I'm week i'm still gonna recommend that the the notebook as non-techy and dorky as it sounds um, it's much more easier to keep a handle on. So. What? What? That's, is that more or less secure than LastPass? Um, well, unless, like, my roommates are going to steal my notebook. Which, I don't know why they would steal my notebook when all my passwords are saved in my computer, so they might as well just use my own computer. Um, <laughs> then, I mean, I feel like it's safer. I think, so. uh, I think that when you separate the digital and the physical... Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no way they're going to hack into your notebook, so that that's something. Yeah. That's like what my mom and dad do. I know. I, I got the tip from my mom, actually. <laughs> just put it in a notebook. My mom has this notebook that she's had, like, four years, and, like, the pages are, like, duct taped back on the cover, and she uses it for all her work passwords, <laughs> and my mom's a, a different password for every account kind of person. That's so. good, though. She's probably more secure than all of us. Don't click the links and emails, and tell us what you think. Uh, you can I send- think it's too much plug. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought that was your plug. No, I have a real plug. I thought you were plugging notebooks. Well, I, I did, but I also have a real plug that goes along with the other topic we also talked about today, which was junk email. Um, oh, oh, I oh. got an invite to um, unroll.me, um, and it is, well, it's still in beta, um, but it's an application that you can put in your email address. It'll show you every, um, not spam mail, but every um, subscription list that you're um, on. And then it allows you to unsubscribe through Unroll Me. Um, And then it also allows you to categorize your subscription list and then have Unroll Me automatically put them all into one email. So um, some of mine I really like. So I did an email of all coupons. So it has all my coupons, my living socials, um, all those great Google offers and all that crap, all of those come in one email at the end of the day. I think I get them at like 8 o'clock at night. Oh, that's um, awesome. And then I get an email of all the clothing companies, like all my American Eagles and Victoria's Secret and all those, come in another email at 8 o'clock. Um, so it's really awesome. Um, it works with Gmail and Yahoo Mail. I'm not sure. Those are the ones I know for sure. Um, but um, you can request... Um, a beta invite if you want to check it out it's unroll.me and it's kind of awesome it so i just started awesome. using it the other day and i haven't made it through all of the ridiculous amount of subscriptions that i have um so it seems to be working so far i like it i can't i that that's such a good idea i'm, I'm surprised it hasn't been thought of yet that's great yeah it's fairly new um i actually think i learned about it on clout is where i got my oh. My invite, I believe. I might have heard about it on Mashable. One of the two. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, yeah. if you would like to participate in emailing and emailing us, uh, you can email our show at socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. That address again is socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. <laughs> that was great. The, your lip syncing was perfect. <laughs> I kind of dragged it out at the end, so I'm like, oh. I had to drag it out, so I was going to try to make you look stupid. But you hung on. So um, do you have anything to kind of wrap up? Did we, did we get any questions from our live listeners? Um, 
I don't think so, but if anyone that's listening live right now wants to ask a question while I finish talking, that would be great, and then we'll answer them. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that um, Social Media Day is coming up on June 30th, which is a Saturday. Um, a lot of larger cities are having events, so make sure you check out um, to find out if there's anything in your city. Um, Social Media Day is ultimately hosted by Mashable, so they have a list on their website of where all the big events are taking place. Uh, Joe and I will be broadcasting some kind of show live um, from the Detroit party, which is going to be at Motor City Casino and Hotel. Um, we're really excited. So we're taking suggestions. If you want to email us your suggestions of what you would like to see covered, um, we're hoping to get to talk to some more industry professionals um, kind of do some one-on-one -on -one interviews with some people and just get a feel for, you know, what Social Media Day is all about. Um, so we're really excited about it and uh, can't wait to... It's one of the reasons I'm really hyper today because I got our press passes today. That is so. super exciting. I, it is really exciting. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's the 30th of this month. Yes. This 30th of June. June 30th. That's not... That's, that's so great. I can't wait. We're going to have some, some extra content put on JustCoolEnough.com and on the YouTube channel. And uh, I just, uh, I, can't, I can't wait. Hopefully we get to see some people there. It'd be kind of cool. It is, it is. Um, it doesn't look like we got any questions during my rambling. So I think it's safe. They're all really shy. Our, our listeners are shy. shy. Or maybe they're just, they're just drones or pawns in our scheme. They, just, just gonna, I, we gave them so much information they're on they're overload still maybe. taking notes that's the problem yes exactly so join us next week we've officially changed our go live time to 8pm eastern standard time on Tuesdays um cause Joe's life is so busy but 8pm works perfect for me so thank yes. you it was good for me cause I was usually hungry and cranky when we did that seven. and now you're so excited cause it's after dinner I'm well fed. Well fed. You get the well fed bonus for another four hours. Yes. Congratulations. So I'm okay, so tune in next week and we'll have another great show. And make sure to follow us on our oh, yeah. Twitter feeds. Do, 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 Man, we're awesome. We are awesome. <laughs>